I said that we would be talking about using data from a sample to and calculating a sample mean to estimate the mean of a population. In, in an actual study, a person is usually interested in estimating the mean of a large population, such as um, a city or um, even a state or a country. So a person might be interested in recording the incomes of a sample of people living in Pleasant Hill and calculating the mean income of the people in the sample to estimate or to get a rough idea of the mean income of the entire city of Pleasant Hill. That would be an example of using a, a sample mean to estimate a population mean. So even um, in, in real studies, we're interested in learning about large populations of people, but when I do that, when I do demonstrations of sampling in these videos, I'm not able to put a really big population of people on the screen. For example, I wouldn't be able to fit 20,000 stick figures on the screen. So what I do is I, I put small populations of people on the screen. And I, I like to do demonstrations in which I take samples from that small population, just so you can actually visually see um, sampling from a population. So um, I'm actually going to do one of those demonstrations with you right now. Here we have a made up population of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15 people. So this is a population of 15 people. Let's pretend that these are 15 students in a class and we're looking at their 15 exam scores. So this person got a 55 on the exam. This person got a 60. These two people got 65s. These two people got 70s. These three all got 75. We have two 80s, two 85s, a 90 and a 95. So it looks like the exam scores in this class roughly follow a normal distribution or a bell shape because it peaks in the middle and then it gradually trails off. The mean exam score of this class is 75. And so if you added these 15 exam scores and divided the total by 15, the mean would come out to 75. And it, um, it makes sense that um, 75 is at the center of this population right here because um, I said that if the population is normal or bell-shaped, the mean is right at the center. I said that in an earlier video. What I wanted to, to do in this slideshow is um, demonstrate cal um, collecting data from a sample of the population and then calculating the mean of the sample to estimate the population mean. And I want to show you that um, typically, the sample, when I take random samples from this population, the sample mean will fall somewhere close to the population mean of 75. Um, close, a little bit, um, it'll fall pretty close to it on either side. Sometimes it'll end up falling further this way, and sometimes it'll end up falling further this way, but overall, it'll usually be pretty, the sample mean will usually be pretty close to the population mean. Uh, because the mean, the mean of a random sample usually does a pretty good job of estimating the population mean, especially when the sample size is large. So here I've randomly selected a sample of three people to be to be my sample. Let's pretend that I'm recording their three exam scores, and I'm calculating the, the mean of my sample. Some of these are the three students that I actually ended up surveying, I gave them a survey to ask them what their exam scores were, and I collected data from them. And this is the data set that I ended up recording from them. I added their three exam scores and divided by three to get the mean of the sample. And it turns out that these three people have a sample mean of 75. So their, their sample mean actually perfectly estimates the population mean. It's perfectly accurate. So let's um, put their sample mean down here on the number line. Remember that the symbol for sample mean is x bar. The symbol for population mean is mu. Since the population mean is mu, I'm sorry, since the population mean is 75, I wrote out mu equals 75. 
And <clears throat> since the sample mean came out to 75, I'm putting an X bar right above 75. So mu is population mean, uh, X bar is sample mean. And in this case, they're both 75. And I, I, I'm going to put the, the population mean of 75 under here, just so we can see how far the sample mean is below or above the population mean. This will allow us to compare each sample mean to the population mean. Now, um, now I'm now let's pretend like I'm going to repeat my study. I'm going to go and ask three other students um, what their exam scores were, and I'm going to calculate the mean of my new sample. So now I end up with these, selecting these three students to be my sample, and I record their exam scores. I end up getting 285s and 195. You can see that this sample comes from the high end of the class, so their, their average or their sample mean will be above the population mean. These three people will probably end up having a sample mean of about 90. So I've surveyed these three students, I recorded their exam scores, and I calculated the sample mean, and it was 88.3. So I'll record that sample mean um, up here. So this is x bar 1 because it's the mean of my first sample. This is x bar 2 because it's the mean of my second sample. So when, when a person does a study and takes a random sample from a population and calculates the sample mean to estimate the population mean, the, the, <clears throat> the sample mean might end up being accurate, like this one, or it might end up overestimating the population mean, like this one, or it might end up or the sample mean might end up being too low when underestimating the population mean. The sample that you end up getting actually just depends on chance. Just um, that, uh, so it depends on chance. That's why each time the study is repeated, we're getting a different outcome. So now I'll take a different sample. These three people are my new sample. I'm doing the study a third time. I've recorded their three exam scores, and I calculate the mean of the sample, and it comes out to 80. So my third sample has a sample mean of 80. And now, let's say I take a fourth sample. That's the mean of this sample. I'm using these arrows to show that the that just like how the population mean is at the center of the population, the, the sample mean is ne um, near the center of the sample. So you see how um, the mean of sample five right here is pr uh, pretty close to the the center of the of this sample of three people right here. So. This sample mean of 76 is about at the center of the sample. Now the, the reason why the population mean is exactly at the center of the population is because the population is normal and symmetrical. Um, most of these samples that I'm taking of three, of three people aren't, um, aren't actually normal or bell-shaped. That's why the mean isn't the sample mean isn't exactly at the center of the sample, but it's some, it's near the center of the sample. For example, this sample, the mean of sample six is pretty close to the center of these three people in sample six. These three people have a sample mean of 85 right here. So x bar six is the mean of sample six. These three people with sixes are all, um, they're the three people inside sample six. And if I keep taking random samples, um, eventually I'm going to get a sample of three people from the low end of the population with low exam scores. And the sample mean will end up being too low. 
and underestimating the population mean. For example, these three people in sample 11, um, they have exam scores of 60, 70, and 80, and their sample mean is 70 right here. This, um, so these three people do kind of come from the lower end of the population, especially this person down here. So that's why their sample mean is down here at 70, and they underestimate the population mean. So if you end up selecting a sample of people from the lower end of the population, the sample mean underestimates the population mean. If you end up getting a sample from the high end of the population, the sample mean overestimates the population mean. But overall, if I keep repeating the study over and over again, and I keep calculating the means of more and more samples, most of the uh, samples will fall, well, most of the sample means will fall within a certain range of the population mean of 75. Notice how about half of them, about half of the sample means are below the population mean. About half of the sample means are above the population mean. And the sample means that I'm, that I'm recording are starting to form a bell shape for a normal distribution, just like the population. And that's actually one point that I wanted to make here, is that if the population is normal, and you keep randomly sampling from that population and calculating more and more sample means, the sample means that, that, you, that you're recording actually build up to form a normal distribution, just like the population. So if the population is normal, the recorded sample means end up being normal. And um, now I want to show you an example of what happens <laughs> when, um, when the population is skewed. when the population isn't normal. So here we have another population of students. This is maybe just another classroom of students who took an exam. And in this classroom, the exam scores are positively skewed or skewed to the right. In other words, most of the exam scores are at the low end. We have 355s. 460s, 265s, and only one person has a 70, and one person has a 75, and only one person has each of these other exam scores. And you can probably imagine that if, um, if I keep taking samples from this population, and I keep calculating the mean of each sample, a lot of the sample means will end up being, um, low numbers, because if the population did poorly at the exam, a lot of my samples will include students who did poorly, and those samples will have low sample means. So let's take a look at that. In this case, the sample mean is, um, I'm sorry, the population mean is 68.7. If you added all of these exam scores and then averaged all of them, you would get a sample uh, population mean of 68.7. And now I'm taking three people from the population. I've recorded their three exam scores. And I'm going to calculate the mean of the sample. And like I said, um, I ended up getting um, three people from the low end of the population with a low sample mean. I mentioned that that was what's likely to happen in this situation. The sample mean was 58.3. Now I t I'm going to repeat it the study and take three other students and record their exam scores. Well, this time the sample mean was about 71. Now I take my third sample. Once again, I ended up getting three people at the low end with a low sample mean. It happened again. 
I got three people at the low end. So this is actually gonna gonna happen a lot of the time. I'm gonna end up getting a sample that includes values at the low end here, just because there's a lot of people to draw from here and not as many to draw from up here. I ended up getting another low sample mean because sample six ended up, well, sample six includes a 55, a 60, and a 65. And that sample ended up having a sample mean of 60. So when the population is skewed like this, the sample means are piling up at the low end faster than they're piling up at the high end, which means that the sample means are actually going to form a, a, a positively skewed shape that looks just like the population the samples are coming from. Like this. Once, um, just like before, the sample means do um, fall within a certain range of the population mean. But um, the difference is that the shape the difference between what we're seeing now and what we saw before is that now we're getting a positively skewed shape and before we got um, a normal or bell shape. So I'll just skip, uh, I'll just scroll through the rest of this pretty quickly. Um, so now I've shown you an example of s uh, sampling from a normal population and sampling from a skewed population. And we, we saw that the, um, the shape of the sample means tends to follow the shape of the population. When the population was normal, the sample means ended up being normal down here. When the population was positively skewed, the sample means ended up being positively skewed. But it turns out that the um, that the sample means um, only follow the shape of the population when the sample size is small, which uh, means a sample size of less than 30, typically. If you take large samples from a population over and over and you calculate the mean of each sample, what actually ends up happening is that the sample means down, down here end up always following a normal shape, regardless of what shape the population has. So if I took samples of 30 from this population over and over again, and I calculated the mean of each one, these sample means would actually end up following a normal distribution even though the population is skewed. So when the population, like I said, when the sample size is small, the shape of the sample means follows the shape of the population. But when the sample size is large, the sample means typically always build up to a normal distribution, no matter what shape the population has. And I wasn't able to demonstrate that to you in this um, demonstration because um, my population only has about 15 people, so I couldn't actually take samples of 30 from this population. But in the next slideshow, I'll actually show you um, an example of of taking 30 samples of 30 from a population, because um, generally 30 is the sample size that's needed. In order to for the in order for the sample means to follow a roughly normal shape, regardless of what shape the population has, thirty is thirty is generally the cutoff point between the sample means following the shape of the population and the sample means um, always following a roughly normal shape. 